Hi everyone, Amy Love here, and I thought I would come on today and share with you how I create my fabric book bases. And I don't normally measure things. Um, I like to keep things shabby chic, which is not precise or perfect, but I know some of you love to have the measurements. So this is for a small fabric book, but let me just say this. When you're considering what size to make your fabric book, uh, base. Keep in mind, once you add trims to all the edges and perhaps dangles at the bottom, this increases in size quickly. <laughs> so I would start with a smaller base. I feel like this is a good size. This isn't like the mini that I just uh, I created, which you can find on my channel. I just did a mini fabric book. That one was actually smaller than this. So this is like a medium size. And this is going to measure about nine inches by four and a half, which really is plenty of room because it, it does grow. So I've, I've cut, uh, what I like to do is cut just two pieces. So that's gonna be my book. So when you fold it, this is how big it's gonna be. It's really, a good size and then I like to use fusible fleece so let me show you the kind that I get looks like this you don't have to use this I like to use this it just makes my life easier and I will show you why you could easily just use felt and put felt in between your pages um, but the thing is is it it tends to move you know, sewing a thick, uh, two pieces of fabric with felt in the middle, <laughs> things tend to shift. So even though this uh, fusible fleece is only fusible on the one side, it still helps tremendously when you're trying to sew a book together. So I highly recommend it. So I'm hoping that you'll be able to see in the camera. This is the soft side. This is got a rougher texture. This is the fusible side. So this is where the adhesive is. So this is the side that you're going to put, want to put down on your fabric. But when you go to iron it, iron it from the fabric side, not from the felt side. But those instructions are on the fusible fleece to make it easier for you. So once you've done that, <clears throat> then you have this. So your fabric is attached to the felt, so it's going to hold still while you sew it. Yes, very convenient. Now, I wouldn't put another piece of fusible uh, fleece on your other piece because that is going to be awful thick to, to try to put through your sewing machine if you are indeed using a sewing machine. <clears throat> I like to use a sewing machine. My table was dirty, goodness gracious. So I'm only gonna use one layer of the fusible fleece. Now you could easily glue this together. There's no, absolutely no reason why you have to sew it. I just prefer to sew mine. You could just glue it. You could just glue a piece of felt down on your fabric and then glue this fabric piece right on top, no problem. You could use uh, Fabri-Tac <clears throat> or you could use hot glue. The only thing I wanna say is fabric tack is going to take time to dry and sometimes it will leave you'll be able to see the glue through the fabric but if you're covering it up with lace like we know we're gonna that's not even an issue <clears throat> the only issue is how long it takes to actually dry the thing about hot glue is hot glue makes things stiff so like this is very i love a fabric book you know for that reason because it's soft and bendable and once you start adding a lot of hot glue it just gets too stiff for me so I like to sew the base now when it comes to decorating the book I will use small amounts of hot glue and I do have um, videos where I show you how I decorate using just a uh, plain fabric book base if you want to see those but this is just about creating the base so I'm going, you see that this isn't even, <laughs> there's stuff sticking out. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to me anyway. So before I go ahead and sew this down, I want to go ahead and add the lace that I'm going to use because I like my pages to be covered in lace. 
and I might as well sew this on too. So I'm going to use this beautiful fabric from Angel Dream Crafts that I'm actually putting on everything right now because I love it so much. So I cut a piece a little bit bigger than my book. Let me get the hair off there. Goodness. <laughs> all of a sudden it's like I see, oh, I don't want to sew the hair in my book. Like sometimes it happens, but I'm not trying to do that. All right. So I'm going to put this piece of lace on here and I do cut the lace bigger than the book and I will trim it up after we get it sewn on. My goodness, I guess a little hair won't matter because I'm gonna cover it up, it's still gross. Okay, I need to wash my desk. And then I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over and I am gonna put this piece on the back. That way I only have to put it through the sewing machine one time and the base is sewn together. So I like to put the part that has the fusible fleece attached on the bottom because it will go through my sewing machine smoother than the loose side. And now you could pin this and that's fine. I don't like to use pins for this particular type of thing. I use these little clips. I love these things. Got them on Amazon, they're amazing. So I'm gonna go around and just clip these. And that is what's gonna hold my book together while I bring it through the sewing machine. So let's just get those clipped on. And there is a link below to my um, Amazon store where you can get these clips um, and fusible fleece if you're not sure where to get them. So that link is below. I'll also have a link to Kim's shop where you can get this beautiful fabric. Well, she has other beautiful fabrics too. Love it. So yes, you, I mean, you could use a, um, a fabric that is, you know, printed on and pretty. You don't have to use just blank fabric like I do. But I, I tend to do that because of how much stuff I put on my fabric book. I tend to cover up whatever little... <gasps> These beetles, y'all, I can't. They're everywhere and they make me crazy. Sorry about that. Little bonus action shot. Jeez. All right, so now I've got that all pinned together. I'm gonna put this through the sewing machine and I'm just gonna sew the edges. Now, I like a zigzag stitch most of the time because it keeps the edges from fraying. But when I'm doing a book, for one thing, it's thick. I don't wanna do a zigzag stitch. We use a lot of thread. Um, and I don't find it necessary when I'm making a fabric book because honestly, I'm going to glue stuff on all of the edges so there's not really a chance for fraying to happen because you know I wish let me do I have an exam where is that lace book I made I should have had one out to show you because <laughs> I oh here it is okay good so I just made this one this is a little mini and you see how big it is it's you'd think I used a base this big but I didn't it was much smaller but all of the edges are covered they're just covered <laughs> with lace. So fraying isn't really an issue. So I wouldn't worry about it. I'm just gonna use a straight stitch. But one thing I will say is I like to use a longer uh, stitch when I'm doing uh, thicker projects. Like I think the standard on my machine is 2.5 for the stitch length. I'm gonna do a 3.5 stitch just because it'll go through easier if you have a longer stitch. The smaller stitches make it really tight and sometimes that's hard to get through. So you can see that it's totally imperfect. There's felt showing and, and all the things. It's not great, but it's just the base of our beautiful book. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna go sew all the edges up and then I'll come back and show you what we can do next. All right, I've got it all sewn down, and I just wanted to show you how not neat it is and not straight and how it just simply doesn't matter. The only thing I tried to make sure of is the parts that were close, you know, and that were showing felt. I wanted to make sure that I got the fabric, so I came down and made sure that the fabric is all sewn down. So I did that, so everything 
looks good. And now I'm going to trim off the extra lace so we don't have all of this laying around. Okay. Whoops. Give me a little fabric book. All right. So to make the book, you're going to need two of these pieces. Two of these completed pages, basically. Covered in lace and felt in between. And that's all I use in my books. I don't use more pages than that because you see how bulky and fat they get. I mean, and there's just no need. <laughs> this one has uh, two of these folded together. And that gave me eight pages. So one, two three, four, no, six, five, six, plus the front cover and the back cover. So, I mean, that's plenty, I think, for a little um, lace book. I mean, but you do you. But it will be harder to get the thread down in the middle if you have more pages. So now I'm going to find the middle. So I'm just going to fold in half. And then squeeze this down and you only need to do this on one of the sheets because you're going to have them on top of each other to sew them down. So there it is and there's no way that I am going to be able to follow that on my sewing machine. So I'm going to use my ruler to make a straightish line. I say straightish because none of my lines are ever straight and that's okay. Um, I recommend uh, using a disappearing ink uh, sewing pen. I'm going to use the air and water side because I only need it to be here long enough for me to get it through the sewing machine. Um, so it works great for that. You can use anything you want, but just know that it, it may be visible. So if you're going to use like a pencil, do it really lightly. Or maybe you want to use um, a pink pen maybe that's not, you know, not too bright and, and use that for your marker or maybe you just want to wing it maybe you think you could just fold it in half make a crease and you're good to go that is not me and I will have a hot mess if I try to do that so I'm going to use the uh, air and water side of my pin and it really does give me a good line to follow so I don't know if you'll be able to see that can you see that line so now I can follow that through the sewing machine and also it's going to disappear or I can use water and just wipe it off with a wet uh, damp cloth which will be fine so now I of course don't have this ready but if you pretend that this is covered just like this what I'll do is I'll put the bottom page under I'll put the one that has my line to sew on on top of that and then I will clamp use my little clamps and clamp that all down and I'm simply going to pass it through my sewing machine following that line right there and then I will have a book so I will show you what this looks like after I get that done so here it is here is my little book base sewn together and ready to be decorated and I already have some great ideas for this guy it's so cute so that is just a basic one if, if you wanted to you could um, instead of putting one line down the middle you could sew two lines down on either side of that instead of putting one in the middle and then you'd have like um, like a spine so that would give you more room for the middle pages, but I don't find that necessary. This seems to work really great. But you see, if you added another page, how how out, how quickly out of control this can get. <laughs> but that is basically how I do it. So I hope that you found that helpful. Please leave me a comment below and let me know. Also, don't uh, hesitate to ask any questions if you have any. And I will, of course, put a link uh, below to my Amazon store where I uh, get most, where I will have most of the supplies I use today, plus um, a link to uh, Kim's Etsy store where I 
got the this lace fabric and also I'll put a link to Doreen's Etsy store which is where I get the beautiful digitals that I will be putting on these pages <laughs> so I hope you're all doing well and I will see you guys on the next one bye everybody